All right, Shane, I think we're live, man. All right, what's going on, people? We'll give a few minutes for everyone to hop in here, and I'll probably be messing around with stuff on my desk. But uh, hope everyone's doing all right. Uh, I know 2020 has been a hot mess for everybody. Um, everyone's got their own things that they've had to deal with. Uh, one, one thing I did want to point out before we start getting into my stuff uh, is I thought it was really cool how everyone um, – jumped in to help out with that charity that I partnered with, uh, was it two weeks ago, a week ago, uh, for the, I, I can't give too many details, but the person that you know was facing a lot of problems for 2020. Um, and so the best way that, uh, Shannon Meyer thought that we as, you know, authors and, um, you know, other concerned people could help out as readers and everything is to kind of run this little charity for her. And you guys really pulled through, um, uh, she she was blown away. Um, I, I don't even know if she knows the full extent of everything, but but I think there was what fifteen authors, maybe uh, maybe even more. Yeah, than that. maybe even more. Um, but it was just you know life changing for her, and so I, I think that kind of stuff is really the coolest part of the Den of Freaks is that uh, we've done that a few times where we really pooled resources together and just you know lent a hand to somebody. Um, and I think that's super cool. That, that's one of the things that I wanted to do with the Den of Freaks is not necessarily charity or anything, but just a sense of family as opposed to just a book club. Um, now, the most important part of that is the book club because I write amazing books. At least I tell myself that every day. So, but uh, but welcome everybody. Um, I think people are still coming in. I'm not sure. Yeah. Oh, there you We're go. Cool. Yep. I'm seeing all the comments now. Um, so if you see your name pop up, uh, or if you don't see your name pop up, it's because you have to do some technical thing that Lane can clarify. I might just say Facebook user. Um, yeah, I think on the you have to give some kind of permission or something. Yep, yep, and it should be in all the all the places that we're going live. It should have had the had a note on how to do that. So a little link to give permission. So, but but you don't have to. We can still see your comments. Yeah, on on Facebook, it still comes across as you. Um, we just on the back end of this, we can't. It just comes across as Facebook users. So, somebody coming in from Cape Town, South Africa. Yeah, yeah I saw South Africa, Kentucky, Ohio, Mississippi, Michigan. Um, so go ahead and tell us where you're from if uh, if you haven't done so already. I see a bunch of familiar names. Joanne Walker there, uh, who's had a shipping delay. I think I saw her post today. Uh, her stuff just got to Canada or something like that, but. Shipping has been crazy. We're facing that too with some of the yeah. old gifts that we've sent out. Uh, some of the things that we're waiting on to give away as gifts. Um, I ordered some really cool Viking beers. I, I think they're in there in the Den of Freak somewhere, but I ordered some really cool Viking beards and we're still waiting on those. So um, the moment we get those, we'll, we'll ship out those prizes, but, but yeah, so hope, hope everyone's having a, uh, a good 2021. I know the, the time frames are crazy. We've got some people that woke up early to come to this or stayed up super late to come to this. Um, so I appreciate it. So I know I've uh, I've been a little quiet recently, um, just 2020, just kind of dealing with uh, all the craziness that everyone's going through. Uh, you know, school. You know, luckily here in Missouri, we haven't had too many hiccups with school, but we've had a lot of, um, you know, maybe it's going to turn into something bad where you got to watch the kids all day or you know do school from home. But for the most part, it's been pretty good. Um, but just a lot of you know, teacher meetings and you know new regulations and new things to deal with. And uh, so it's all good, all, all fun, all good, but just taking more time. And I'm, I'm trying to focus a little bit more on spending time with the family because I'm a workaholic. And so if, if uh, left unattended, I'll just write all day. And so I'm trying to try to take a little bit of time off to kind of focus on that. Um, but having said that, I'm, I'm ready to get back into the saddle. Um, I've been back in the saddle, but uh, for the last couple of weeks here, but I've been working really hard, writing a ton, uh, Lane's been working on a stuff that a lot of stuff that he'll go through. I'm sure um, any kind of updates that we have, but uh, things have been really good here. So uh, just had a, a furnace blow out at my house, so I uh, have to have to replace that. Um, of course, it was in the bedrooms, so you know everyone's got space heaters in their rooms now. Um, so yeah, just 2020, just kind of roll roll your shoulders and deal with it. I think everyone's got something that they can complain about this year. So. Hopefully 2021 will be better. Uh, that's one reason that I was hoping I could get Savage out by 2020, but there's just no possibility. Um, it's, it's a huge story. It's really crazy. I was telling Lane about some of it this morning. He was laughing. Um, 
so yeah, so January 26th, I guess we'll start with that. Uh, we've got Savage, uh, book 15 of the Nate Temple series coming out. Um, it's going to be a really fun one. I know a lot of people like it when, try not to give any spoilers here, but when Nate went to Faye and uh, he tapped into his wild side and kind of cut loose a little bit, uh, we're going to see a whole lot of that in Savage. And uh, the fun part about Savage is I, I keep in, I keep doing this, but it keeps leading into little mini kind of trilogies or story arcs. And so Savage is going to have some crazy stuff happen that sets up immediately into book 16, which is Dark Horse. And I don't know if Lane has a copy of those pulled up. I didn't I didn't tell him to, but um, OK. So I can I can do you, it pretty fast. Yeah, but. So if you can, just while I'm talking. Um, but Dark Horse is going to be a continuation of Savage. Um, so it, I'm, I'm really excited to kind of go there. I've, I've been itching to do uh, a little Nate because he's just so fun. You can just cut loose and go crazy. Um, so I know I was planning on doing Cali book 11 and 12, uh, or sorry, book 10 and 11, uh, and then book 12. And I, I decided to kind of pump the brakes on that. And, you know, I think 2020 needed a little more Nate. So I was trying to get that knocked out, but it's going to end up being late January. So, um, so I'm working on Nate and I can kind of go through the list of stuff that I'm working on. Hey, just uh, before you do that, what was yeah. the image that you wanted? Uh, it's the most recent dark, or well, it doesn't say dark horse, but it's the most. Okay. Recent. I just wanted to make sure that that was actually what you were wanting to, you yeah. know, give that, give that away right now. Cause yeah, I, I posted it in the den just to get a little buzz going. So, and plus I've, I've been waiting to do a unicorn cover forever. So. Well, you already gave gave away all of it. Yeah, I've got to download it and then I'll I'll put cool. it in here in a second. Cool. So you guys will see that pop up here in a second. But, um, but yeah, that one's going to be this this whole little arc that I'm doing with Nate's going to be nuts, and it's gonna it's gonna kind of separate. So you're not going to have to worry about crossover too much with Callie and Quinn. There, there there will be a little bit of stuff, but nothing that's you know where you have to kind of read them in a specific order or anything like that. They're going to kind of veer off and do their own thing. Um, so. You don't have to worry about mixing up storylines or anything like that. So um, let's see here. So <clears throat> while Lane's pulling that up, um, I'm, I've been working on a goal of about 30 to 50,000 words. There you go. Um, there's Dark Horse. That's the rough draft. So there's still um, some tweaks that we're doing with that. Um, you'd notice that Grimm doesn't have his um, telltale feathers with the, you know, the peacock feathers with the red on there. Um, so there's couple tweaks that are going to be coming in there, but we're really excited about the progression of that cover. And so we figured it was, it was good enough to share, at least get some hype going, especially since it's kind of Savage part two. Um, so the, the events that end in book 15 of Savage are going to lead directly into Dark Horse. Um, and Nate's going on the hunt for um, some of the masters. So he's finally found out some names and so he's ready to uh, introduce them to the Horsemen of Hope. So um, cool aspect of that is it's going to have a lot of the side characters. You're going to get a lot of answers about Carl in both Savage and Dark Horse. Um, so it's going to tie up a lot of loose ends, but it's going to it's going to kind of expand upon the big picture story. Finally, you know, with leading up to the Omega War and stuff like that. Uh, so you're going to get a lot of cool, um, you know, I told you so moments from the past. Uh, a lot of Easter eggs that are going to get revealed. Um, just, just a lot of fun stuff. So I'm, I'm pretty excited about it. My notes are just ridiculous on it. I've got notepads just full of gibberish, um, that maybe someday I'll, maybe someday I'll sell it. Who knows? Can't, can't show it yet. Cause it's got all the answers on there, but, but on that note, on the writing front, um, I'm, I've been, I've, I've set a goal for myself of about 30,000 to 50,000 words per week. Um, on a, you know, if, if I'm running full steam ahead and the storylines are great and I don't have any issues or hiccups or plot holes or anything, um, I can easily knock out 10 a day. Um, and so, you know, I've gotten up to, I think, 40,000 or something in one day. That was my record, but that almost killed me. So um, 10,000 a day, I can do pretty well as long as everything's flowing pretty smoothly. So um, probably 30 to 50,000 words a week, um, which would result in anywhere from 10 to 15 books just for me. Uh, that's not counting anything with Cameron um, or anything with a couple of my other side projects that I have going on. So those would be books like uh, Shade of Devil 4, 5, 6. Um, we've already got covers for Shade of Devil 4 and 5. Um, and I'll be announcing 
Um, I'll probably be putting them up for pre-order, honestly, um, at least the next two, three, four books um, spaced out, you know, at whatever timeline I, I think we can publish them. But I'll probably be doing that here within, I'd say, after the new year, um, probably the first week of January, right around Savage. Um, I'll be releasing kind of the release or I'll be announcing the release schedule um, of what books I'm doing in what order. Um, some of it will be tentative, but some of it will be solid with already having pre-order links. So Shade of Devil 4, 5, and 6. Um, I think there's probably going to end up being seven books in that series. Who knows? I could get to book five and say there's way more to tell. Um, so I might continue that. Uh, Nate Temple, obviously 15 with Savage. And then Nate Temple 16 with Dark Horse. Uh, possibly Nate Temple 17. That kind of just depends on Templeverse stuff, on what Cameron's got going on. Um, and then obviously I need to catch Callie up quite a bit. So I've got Feathers and Fire, book 10, 11, and 12. Um, and I know I'm announcing all these back to back, not giving Lane a chance to show any covers and there's probably too many to show anyway, but we'll, we'll be posting series specific uh, books um, here pretty quick. Like I said, oh, probably. I'm pretty fast. Which one do you want? Uh, let's do Shade of Devil 4 and I think Boom. 5. There you go. So Devil's Do, that's one that um, that one might take me a little bit longer. I just I would have to spend a couple of days of kind of checking my notes and you know double checking everything that I had um, happening in the story and make sure I'm not missing anything. So I'll have to catch back up on that one. So that might take me you know a week longer than normal. But um, but once I start writing it, it'll go super fast because uh, Soren is awesome to write. I love writing Soren. Um, and then do we have Shade of Devil five? No. Okay. I thought we did. I know we got a draft for it, but uh, uh, you didn't share it with me. Uh, I blame you. Okay, that one's on me. But that's uh, <laughs> no, that one's a really fun cover, and I think that one's called Devil's Night, I believe. Um, so we've got that. We've got Feathers and Fire, ten and eleven. I believe we have those covers already. That'd be Halo Breaker and then Angel Dust. There's Halo Breaker. That's Cali uh, book ten, I believe. Um, yeah, book done. And that one's, uh, again, that's going to be its own little trilogy with uh, kind of continuing from Trinity um, and dealing with uh, a lot of the craziness that happened there. And then obviously you can tell that it goes to the Garden of Eden. So you're going to get see some really cool stuff in Callie's world um, that kind of jumps into the, you know, the heaven um, and, you know, the Christian myth, not the myth, but the Christian, the mythical aspects of the Christian uh belief system and religion. So you get to see a lot of cool things there that I haven't really played with yet, where the Garden of Eden, certain angels, uh, demons, obviously the sins. Um, so you're going to get to see a lot of cool stuff, kind of like Nate when he goes to Faye and you get to see a new world. It's, it's going to be very similar to that, where you get to see some uh, unique takes on uh, the Christian religion. So that's going to be really fun. And then we've got Angel Dust, which kind of wraps up that little story arc um, with Callie. And that one, um, obviously the the, it implies, the cover itself implies that there's a big fight. And so that one's going to kind of wrap up the whole sins and all that stuff. Um, and there, I, I can't give away too many details on that one because some of it might cross over into Nate. So uh, just a tiny bit. But So that's going to be fun. Uh, we've got, I was just talking to Cameron today. Um, I'll go into his stuff separately or maybe Lane will cut me short. I'm not sure what, what we're allowed to say yet. But um, but with Phantom Queen Diaries, I'm not sure how many um, he's kind of ballparking, but we were talking about the opportunity of you know, how many how many books he might want to do this year and kind of spitball on that. So there's going to be some, you know, one at least Phantom Queen Diaries, I would believe, probably, probably more. Um, and then I have two new projects that I'm really excited about that once I catch up the Templeverse a little bit, I'll be looking at... Um, one of those will probably actually kind of coincide with uh, my work on Nate Temple because it's with a co-author um, that I'm really excited about. And he's been extremely patient working with me. So I can't can't announce any details, but um, he's he's kind of given me a little bit of room while I was taking care of some family stuff. So I really appreciate that. Uh, he's a rock solid guy, incredible author, um, good friend, uh, general inspiration. So um, working on a project with him uh, that's an urban fantasy. It's a new, brand new, uh, non-Templeverse, not anything um, that's already existing. Completely new, um, and it's about werewolves. That's all I'll say. So it's going to be super cool. I would, I would assume, 
and I'm, I'm going to put words in his mouth, but I would, I would assume that if I can keep up with him, um, I'd say probably at least one to three books this year. Uh, but we'll, we're still checking schedules on all that. So that one's going to be really fun. I've already been reviewing a bunch of uh, the work that he's put together on that. So um, that'll, I'm, I don't, we don't have any launch dates yet because he's been waiting on me, but I'm turning up the dial to work on that today, actually finishing that up. So um, Shattered Halo, that's the uh, the story about Asriel. Uh, that's, it's going to be really fun. And I think Lane probably has that somewhere. Wait, I'm sorry. I'm I'm doing like 15 different things. Shattered Halo. Yep. Uh, we don't think we don't have anything with the actual title on it yet, um, but that's that's going to be an incredibly fun story that I can't wait to tell. Um, and it goes into the Book of Enoch um, and Nephilim and all that kind of stuff. And so that one's really fun. Uh, the Watchers and all the kind of Dead Sea Scroll type stuff um, that I, I got lost in. I was doing research on that. Um, Actually, a lot of the time that I was taking a break from actual writing, I was just researching some of these new series ideas. And so I spent a ton of time going into detail on the Book of Enoch and Dead Sea Scrolls and uh, different angels and demons and stuff like that. So there's a really fun story that I came up with with him. So that's going to be super fun. Um, you know, based on my word counts, I, I would assume that one to three books could come out um, with that one. So it just depends on some of the partnerships we have to make with cover designers and stuff like that. Narrators, um, with that one, we might try to time it so that narrators and Audible happens either at the same time or maybe even first. Um, so that'll obviously kind of delay it a little bit. So we'll just have to see. Um, but yeah, so uh, that's that's kind of my writing schedule. I know that's, that's the main thing that everyone really wanted to know. Um, what I've been up to recently is, you know, is he still writing? You know, he's taking a break and kicking his feet back. So just let you know that I'm uh, going to make up for lost time. So really excited about that. Um, and really other, other than that, um, I think Lane might be able to jump into any audio updates we might have. So the, the only audio update that we have is, um, not, not for you. Yeah. Um, as most of you, most of you know, Argento's kind of grown and had some other authors come on board and that kind of stuff. So Hunter's got his, uh, Holy Shioli, um, coming out and that'll probably be in like 10 to 15 days that it'll be, will be live. So yeah. we're, we've sent it to, to Amazon today. So, and I don't know if, uh, are we able to show anything for what he's working on on his own? Is there any reason we can't? Um, we yeah. haven't announced it yet. So, yeah, you know, okay. I, I would say uh, we'll be announcing that probably early January where you can kind of see some of the stuff. He's kind of done some hints at it and stuff like that in his group. Okay. Um, so, so yeah, if you want to go over and check out his group and, uh, he's got, he's got hints at the new cover and everything like that over there. Gotcha. So. Okay. Yeah. I don't want to ruin his thunder. So we, yeah, yeah. we do have a really cool cover that I really want to show people, but, um, but that's his baby. So we'll let, we'll let him do that. But if, uh, if you don't know what we're talking about, Hunter writes the preternatural chronicles. That's Hunter Blaine. Um, super cool guy, uh, super fun, uh, hilarious and, just a nut job, honestly. He's uh, he's, he's hilarious to talk to. Uh, one of the funniest guys I know. He's got a really cool series about a vampire. So, um, the Preternatural Chronicles. I think book seven is the one we're talking about, right? Or is yes. It book, yeah, book seven. So that's the one that he's working on right now. But, um, but yeah, book six audio. You said that one's the one that is being wrapped up, I believe. Yep. Yeah. So, so that's a super fun series. If uh, if you don't mind a little bit racier humor. Um, jump on over to Hunter Blaine's books and uh, you'll, you'll definitely have a good time. Um, and then Cameron, are we, do we want to say anything about that? Hint at yeah, we it. Can. We can hint at it for sure. I think, uh, I think it's a good time to start hinting at it at yeah. least. Uh, Absolutely. He's telling people that, uh, Hunter, uh, that Cameron hasn't been just, you know, hanging out in Barbados. Well, he's just been taking selfies. But, exactly. Uh, exactly. That takes, it takes a lot of time. I mean, the editing takes three times. Yeah. The, the, pictures. the lighting, you got to get that stuff right. Yeah. It's, it's a job. It's, it's not easy being that pretty. Um, but no, he's actually been working his butt off. Um, and so he's got a brand new series that he's working on that's outside of the Templeverse. That's his own baby. Uh, it's his own thing. Argento is publishing it. We're helping him 
with all the marketing and all the, you know, the boring business stuff. Um, but he, we just announced today, I believe the alpha team, right? Yeah. Just started sending messages to people for the alpha team yep. for his, his new series. So, so they're gonna, they're gonna get a kick out of that and they'll be able to take a, probably start reading it here beginning of next week. Yeah. Maybe. I plan to send it out, um, early, early next week. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. So that's called, um, do you want to put any image up? Uh, I can don't have anything ready, but, okay. um, so it's echoes of vent light. Yeah. Let's first. just say this series. I don't have anything that we would, okay. would I, I, we don't want to give it all away yet. Yep. It's yep. too much fun oh. to just give it all away. Yep. Absolutely. So he's, but it, but it's a totally new thing and it's, it's, it's fantasy. <clears throat> so you guys are really going to like it, but he's taken a couple, um, he, he's taken a completely new route from anything I've seen. What well, I mean, people maybe try to do something like he's done, but he's, he's really taken a cool angle on, um, what's, what's the term that we finally decided on on the genre. There's a couple different ways to say it. it's revisionist. Yeah. Yeah. So it's super cool. And it's, it's, it's his own world and it's a mirror of ours, kind of like a, another mm -hmm. dimension, I guess you could say, or a mirror world. Um, and it's super cool, uh, super cool concept. And I'm really excited to see how it goes. And he's working on, he just finished the first one, but he's, um, he's already got the first three outlined. Um, and like I said, Alpha's getting that, like I said, probably next week. And then yeah. they'll, they'll kind of spitball it and make sure, you know, there's no, you know, nothing that needs to be changed or corrected or, you know, whatever, any kind of comments they have suggestions, whatever. And then uh, we'll start, we'll start promoting the heck out of that. But it's, it looks really exciting. Like I said, completely fresh, completely new um, from anything I've really seen. And so I'm really excited to see how that blows up. Um, and obviously Cameron's a, a killer writer, um, much, much better, um, in in the actual academic side of writing and how to write uh you know he's got the mfa and just he, he's he knows a lot of tricks that most authors don't um, especially indie authors and so he's got a lot of training and you know obviously skill set with kind of weaving sentences together and so it's it's a really interesting um concept but it's also incredibly well written so it's gonna be really fun to see what everyone thinks of that um and uh, the only thing, the thing I'm, I'll, I'll break in and just say as I'm yeah. typing out, it's hard. I'll probably screw it up or something. Uh, oh, you were, you were typing out too. Oh, anyways, uh, I saw somebody say that uh, I should be called the alchemist, and you know where, where that reminded me of. Oh yeah. Like oh, we've yeah. also, we also got updates on, on, on Kimbra and her, yep. uh, her story. Yep, that was my newest thing. Um, I was actually going to go to that next, but. Um, with Kimber Swain, I know we, we talked about writing or that she talked about writing a series. Um, she had actually already written one of the books, but she wanted to make some changes and, uh, just kind of thinking of the big picture. She wanted to change some aspects of it. And so she, uh, she just sent over, I think on Sunday, um, so a couple days ago, I think she sent over a book, uh, book one. So we're, I'm looking at that right now, um, of the alchemist error series. And so we've got a, we had some hiccups with designers that we might, um, you know, we're, we're just trying to figure out how best to do that. Everyone's obviously been in, impacted by 2020. And so, um, you know, a lot of people faced suddenly having to watch their kids at home. And so it kind of impacted their own business. So, uh, so we got to kind of pin down the cover aspect, but it's the Alchemist Air series and it's, uh, it's going to be really fun. We've been waiting on it. Um, and it's going to be her own little series that Argento is publishing. It's not part of the temple verse or anything. Um, and I don't know how much she's changed, so I don't want to tell you too much about what it's about. Uh, Cause like I said, she just re revised it and sent it over. Um, but essentially it's uh, it's about an alchemist who uh, works in, in a family business, kind of like Nate Temple where it's his legacy um, of a bourbon distillery or a whiskey distillery. And so uh, it's a re really cool mix of being a, obviously a master brewer or whatever the term is for a, a bourbon guy. Um, and being an alchemist. So it's some really cool stuff that she's written that I can't wait to finish. Uh, so that's exciting. Um, we're talking to her about when, you know, what her schedule is, because obviously she writes a lot of books. And so we're kind of seeing, you know, what kind of time frame she has in mind for uh, sequels to that or when she wants to release it. And we're still hammering out those details, but 
um, it is moving forward really quick. So excited about that. But um, on the writing front, on the writing front, uh, that's that's pretty much it. Um, I'm ready to start hustling. I was writing all all morning today when I wasn't talking to Cameron, and Lane's hustling away on a bunch of stuff. Um, that we're, we're working on a, a website that's geared towards readers. So if you think something like uh, uh, reader groups like BookBub or you know anything like that, there's there's a new one that we're working on uh, very closely. Uh, it's going to be really fun. It's going to be really cool. So. Um, 2020 obviously kind of delayed some of the launch strategies that were in place for that. Um, but it's going to be all sorts of genres, not just fantasy. Um, it's definitely going to focus on fantasy and thriller. And I think, was it romance was the other big one um, initially? I think so. But yeah, but it's eventually it's going to be in any genre. But uh, that's going to be really cool. It's going to have ac access to a lot of uh, different authors that you can check out and stuff like that. So. That's been something that I want to talk about that um, hopefully is coming down, I would say, probably early 2020 or 2021. So just a lot of cool stuff. We've been running around kind of doing the, the publisher hat job as opposed to the author monkey job. And so I'm ready to get back to the to the cage and start writing again. So I've been doing that like a machine. I think I was here till 2.30 yesterday in the morning. Um, came back after work. Um, that's and just what you say. I don't know. I don't have any proof of that. But look, look at when I uploaded Savage. <laughs> That's proof. That's proof. Um, check my IP address. But yeah, I uploaded Savage. I think two in the morning, and it was already live at seven. So, um, so yeah, I'm, I'm back in the zone. I've got the uh, the excitement to just start bleeding words again. So it's it's a uh, that's my favorite part of the job is just telling the stories. So get all the boring stuff out of the way and make Lane do it. And then I can get up and uh, start writing again. So, um, but I think the link, I think Lane's either got it posted or if you go to the Den of Freaks, it's there to pre order Savage. Um, and if you go to my author page, it's there. I think we sent out an email today. Um, but it's, it's, if you thought Carnage was crazy, you're going to flip when you read Savage. Um, I'm, I'm pulling no punches. I mean, you can tell by the title um, that I really just wanted to put Nate into that zone of you know no no f's left to give and so it's uh he goes back to Faye and he's got to deal with a lot of different uh things all kind of coinciding at once uh with st louis um potentially being under attack um and the the regulars are starting to realize that you know there's things that they can't explain and so uh that's going on and then Faye's in the Faye realms in chaos and obviously the other gods and pantheons are not too pleased about what Nate did in Carnage. And so they're all scheming. And so it all kind of comes to a head in Savage and Nate just cuts loose and doesn't play by the rules anymore. So it's incredibly fun. If you liked Wild Side or Legend, you're going to love Savage. And then Dark Horse just pulls it even further where it kind of opens up on what really happened and that all these things that Nate's been going through <clears throat> since Legend, um, literally since Legend have all been connected. Um, and so I, I've been waiting to tell everyone that for a long time. So it's, it's going to be fun. So I'm excited. Awesome. Well, hopefully, hopefully you're excited to read it. Yeah, maybe, maybe. <laughs> I bet there's maybe like one or two people mm -hmm. in there that might be excited. I haven't seen anybody say they're excited about it actually. Yeah, I don't, I don't Looking through that. all these comments and I was like, eh, we might show up. Yeah. Maybe, maybe I'll change it to just 2022 and take a break. Yeah, there we go. I can no, use a break. No, I couldn't do that. I, 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 I will blow up if I don't get the words out. So, but uh, well, yeah, we I'm are there. actually uh, sitting pretty well on time. And uh, yeah. if you want to take uh, our first live question, oh yeah, of course. You got to we'll tell see, me how we'll that's see working. how this. Uh, well, uh, Alex will come in here in just a second. I might, I might pop myself out, and uh, he'll ask you a question, and you get to answer it and then we'll see I'll be working on the back end trying to bring in everybody else that's that's going to be coming on perfect but but we'll see how it all goes this is the first time we're trying this so this this could be really ugly I'm just saying so, I mean if not we can do it the way we normally do but we are, yeah. we are in the same office now we're just in different ends of the office so he can do his thing and I can do my thing but um, yeah we're both in the same building I saw someone ask that earlier Oh yeah. Yeah. That's been a, uh, a world changer. So it's been good, but 
And all right. While, while you're doing that, Lane, while you're getting everybody, I just wanted to say thanks. I got a bunch of Christmas cards. Um, I, I, opened, I opened Cameron's cards because I wanted to see if there's any gifts in there before I forwarded it to him. Um, so that way I can take the, yeah, say Lane got some too. Thank you. Um, I took all the money and stuff out of Cameron's, and so I'll send those cards <laughs> out to him later. Um, but thank you very much. That that's, that's really cool. I've got a whole yeah. shelf of stuff here that's from all the readers. Um, so I really appreciate that. And, and I keep other... I keep my office blank, so if Shane fires <laughs> me, I'm just ready to walk out at any point I, in time. So. I don't I don't let Nate or uh, Nate I don't let Lane have anything fun in his office because then he yeah. won't work. So yeah, exactly. Uh, but uh, I got this too. It's from Fusion Academy, I believe. Yep. Um, I think that's what their school's actually called. But I, I was able to do a Zoom Zoom or Skype. It was like a basically a call with the a school's students that they they've been doing digital uh, education, and so. I got to talk with them and a bunch of budding authors, incredibly intelligent kids um, that are, you know, above their, you know, the typical 12 year old or 13 year old or 14 year old, just incredibly intelligent, probably smarter than me. And a bunch of them want to be writers. Yeah. Well, yeah, well, yeah, there's no question they were. Um, that's actually a good point. They absolutely are smarter than me. Their IQs are off the charts, but um, just incredibly talented kids. And some of them wanted to be authors. And so they had a lot of questions about, you know, how can they self publish and how can they do that? So I got to sit, sit with them for about an hour and that was with Jeanette, um, right? Jeanette, I can't remember her last name, um, top of my head now. Yeah. But, but she actually sent me a little gift. So I, I really appreciate that. And I wanted to say thank you for that. So, um, and then the last thing would be maybe this lane, if you want to mention. Oh yeah. Um, for all the helpers that we had for friends giving uh, virtual, the, the gift is still coming and it will look a lot like that. It'll be slightly different, um, but we should get them in tomorrow or later tonight, but I'll, I'll go and get them. And uh, it's a cool little notebook with the outside leather bound. It's, it's really cool. So we really appreciate it. And you were not forgotten. It's just taken a little while to, to get them. Yeah. So. So thank you for helping with Friendsgiving. And yes. the, the gift is a little delayed, but that's that's 2020 for you. So, but I just want to make sure we threw that in there. So Alex is probably you ready? There. Yeah, I'm ready. Cool. Well, let's see. Alex, are you ready? You can shake your head. Yes, I can see you. All right, he's ready. Here we go, man. Perfect. Hey, how's it going, guys? What's going um, on? Not a whole lot. Just you know, doing a little traveling for the holidays, going back home, see my yeah. folks. Nice, man. Where, where's that? Which part of the country? So I live in Louisiana. Um, okay. My wife and I live in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and we're traveling about an hour and a half northwest to oh, go okay. basically okay. to the middle of the state. Yeah, that's awesome, man. To my hometown. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. And the weather's, weather's so, fine down there? I'm sorry, oh, what's sorry. that? The weather's fine down there? It is. It's been cold the last couple of days, or I say cold. It's cold for us. Um, this morning was 34, and uh, but it's probably in the 60s at the moment. Nice. Yeah, so, that's you know, it's Louisiana weather for you. Cold yeah. as hell, wear a coat in the morning, and by the afternoon, you're in shorts and a T-shirt. <laughs> same, same here, man. <laughs> yeah, from what I was reading, um, I, I'm really not familiar with St. Louis at all, but uh, how Nate says the, the weather is extremely finicky. It, you know, down here, we have a saying, if you don't like the weather, wait five minutes, and yes. it'll change. Yep, same thing they say here. Yep, yep. exactly. Yep. So, we go. so that actually leads me up to my question. Um, what made you decide to – do urban fantasy as opposed to say like Tolkien D and D style fantasy and why St. Louis? Yeah. So I, uh, actually, my first book that I wrote was like a sword and sorcery type fantasy. Okay. Um, and so someday I might publish that. It needs a lot of work. Um, but I, <laughs> but I wrote that and I pitched it to a bunch of, you know, New York agents. And that was kind of my first taste at defeat is when a lot of these okay. agents were like, no, you know, it's, it's good, but it's, you know, we've already got a fantasy guy or we've already got, you know, Tolkien or, you know, whatever other yeah. author it is, Sarah Moss or something. And so I said, well, that sucks. And so I wanted to find something that was more niche and just more fun, really, because I spent a lot of time, I spent a lot of time writing that and then just kind of got shrugged off. And so I thought, okay, well, what about writing an anti-hero that is just the guy who doesn't give a bleep <laughs> um, and, uh, and make him the hero. Uh, right. And, and I just thought that was kind of fun, like a fallen angel type story where, he started off having everything and then he gets kicked on his butt and falls down the mountain and he's got his claws way back to the top. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to kind of write the Deadpool, you know, type story where yeah. it's just fun and, you know, he's not perfect at all. Uh, but that's kind of the charm. And so I chose St. Louis 
uh, or Missouri specifically because it's called the gateway to the West. Um, and you'll notice in the earlier books, there's a lot of West uh, pantheons, mm -hmm. the Greeks and stuff like that. And that's all going to come full circle on, on some of the reasons for the arch and things like that and why I picked St. Louis. And that's also why I made Cali in Kansas City, Missouri, um, so that they're pretty close and that they, okay. both, they both suffer the impacts of Missouri. So I definitely can't re wait to read about it. And it's just it's very interesting as someone who came up reading. I didn't never read Tolkien, but I read uh, Ari Salvatore, if you're yeah. familiar with him. Yeah. And, you know, reading about Drizzt and how he would just go through with his scimitars and just all yep. this melee style of fighting to going to reading this wizard's battle and all the unique shifters that you bring into, which yep. are, by the way, amazing. Awesome. And I love the snark and wit and banter. That is absolutely my favorite part. Awesome. Man. Because grown, like I said, growing up reading Salvatore, he can be very dry and very wordy, yeah. but the banter in yours just really brings it all, all yeah, together. I, I think it helps. It helps to me as a reader, um, mm -hmm. reading those kind of stories that kind of balance it. You know, if it's all jokes, it's kind of like, man, whatever. But if you, right. if you can really balance the danger and the darkness and the humor and just juggle mm -hmm. those three balls perfectly, um, I think it just makes for a more fun story, a fun experience. It makes it a complete experience. It, yeah. And I mean, to read Iron Man as a wizard is kind of great. That's how I've always pictured him is, you know, yeah. Tony Stark just giving wizard powers instead of Absolutely. a suit. That's exactly the point is to show somebody who had it all. and They're kind of a prick. Um, mm -hmm. and they realize maybe I need to, maybe I need to improve myself <laughs> instead of everyone else. So, um, yeah, right. fun. and I think my favorite it, it, on that note, I think one of my favorite, I, I don't want to say quotes, but would be when Nate says how he realizes that he has to be that lightning rod for his friends yeah. to be the, you know, the bad guy. So everyone else doesn't have to be. Yeah. That, that was and actually I, that kind of stuff is actually the most important part to me um, mm. because I love philosophy um, yeah. and, and psychology. Those are two of my favorite subjects. And Absolutely. So I really love kind of weaving that, uh, that kind of stuff. Like, you know, a lot of the Greek myths are about mm -hmm. heroes or anti-heroes or just bad people or good people. And so I really wanted to kind of put that in there is not just they're bad because they want money or something, but just some kind of philosophical ideology or just understanding and just, kind of let people taste a lot of these different kind of evils. Um, right. And then the opposite of that, these different kind of good guys that maybe they're not perfect, but they're really good at this one thing. Um, <laughs> and so, and that's why I think Nate's perfect because you do need a, you do need a black knight. You know, you do need that kind of bad guy to be a good guy at times mm -hmm. um, so that he can take the punches for you. And so. Exactly. I love that. That's one of my favorite things about Nate. So. Yeah, definitely. I, I would agree. And I, also one last thing that I truly, absolutely love about your ser your book series is how you blend all of these different magics and pantheons and everything into one. But you don't just blend them. You make it work. Yeah. So, you know, Louisiana or Baton Rouge and New Orleans specifically, they call the great melting pot. You know, you take yeah. all of these cultures and you, you bring them together and you would think there'd be contention, but there's – Everyone has fun. Everyone has a good yeah. time. Mardi Gras, I think of. And and that's the way I look at it. Is you, you take all of these pantheons and the, the shifters, the drag the dragons, the vampires, the fae, all of that, and just make it into one cohesive, fun to read whole. And yeah. I was I was very pleasantly surprised by when I first read Obsidian Sun. It it actually takes a lot of research to do that. Um, to do yeah, a lot of yeah. like that's, I have I knew I knew Greek and Norse and you know I was pretty familiar with a lot of this just because it was my favorite hobby as a kid mm -hmm. the mythologies of these of these pantheons and whatever you want to call it um, but trying to find the connections where it's like oh wait you know um, Odin was also known as Santa Claus and mm -hmm. he's also got ties to the Fae and because you know a lot of these these religions or belief systems or mythologies kind of came after one another and so they adopted mm -hmm. things from each other and so. I, I wanted to try and weave that into a seamless, seamless concept where it's like, hey, these all exist at the same time and it makes sense. And that's that's one of my favorite parts is finding those little facts of, you know, this God, Absolutely. this God also used this as a weapon or this this crystal or this symbol. And so did mm -hmm. Thor or so did, you know, Odin or so did someone else. And you're like, oh, man, that can actually I can put that together. And so it's kind of a puzzle to me. 
Yeah, one hundred percent, and that is the coolest part to me as far as the the urban aspect of it. How you bring Asterion into this, and yeah. you know how he can be a cow, but he's also you know the Minotaur or yeah. Achilles running a bar because that's exactly what Achilles would do yeah. in in modern day. Yeah, and right. so it's just it's mind blowing to me, and awesome. I'm not ashamed to admit that I have read the Temple series about three times now. <laughs> oh, awesome, man! Well, you're gonna love Savage because it, it starts I, bringing, it starts bringing a lot of the kind of loose ends over the last three mm-hmm. four books together, and you realize I truly that, can't wait, yeah. and I, I'm most interested interested to see what the elders are gonna come about. Yes. That that's that's been what's that? That's one of the key focuses of Savage. Is the I, I'm very excited for that. Not just Carl, but all of the elders. Right. That, that's been teasing me for so long just to know not only how does Carl play into this, but how do his other people play into this? Yep. And the the whole where's the bone crown and no God that I would know is just it's been in my head. Yeah. No, you're, you're going to get to meet um, at least a dozen other elders in this book. Really? Yeah. So it's going to be fun. awesome. Awesome. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to have to cut you off, man. We got yeah. we got other people coming on. But thanks for joining us. It was yeah, awesome. Thanks, Alex. And I, Thank you. It people was, were like. We'll yeah, I, I'm, I'm very honored to have been here. Uh, thanks for coming, man. Travel safe, right? Yes, sir. All right. Later, Alex. Y'all have a good one. <clears throat> All right. I think uh, we got Jasmine up next. And Jasmine, if you can shake your head yes, you're good to go. All right. Well, here we go. Hey. Hi, everybody. How you doing? Welcome, welcome <laughs> to the world. I'm super excited and super nervous. Uh, you were the first author to actually talk to me on Facebook and now oh. get to be on live with you. So that's that's awesome. No, that's, that's my favorite, <laughs> really my cool. Favorite part of the job. Yeah, that's what I like so much about the urban fantasy authors. I mean, you, Kimbra, Orlando, Cameron, Hunter, you guys yep. actually interact with the fans. It's not that untouchable like some of the other people. Yes. <laughs> so it's yes, great. You're absolutely right. Um, or you have to wait till to go see him we're here you can just talk to us yeah and you guys are always putting out merch and listening to what we actually want instead of you know what some marketing person has decided they yes. think we'd like yes that's vital so my question is you've always it is <laughs> Uh, you've always talked about in your different things about how you have everything plotted out and the different points you want to hit, but um, we've also seen where stuff deviates. So which character has um, their plot has kind of given you the slip and made you kind of change course and was most surprising and exciting to you? So I, I think there's two answers to that. Um, I can't speak on Phantom Queen because Cameron kind of drives that ship um, for the most part. Like he comes up with the big you know, story arc for Quinn and I just make sure it fits um, in the temple verse, but Nate definitely drives the bus um, and he's, he's drunk half the time. So he just drives it wherever he wants, but I'm, but I'm really good at <laughs> writing. Like that's really easy for me to roll with. The one that really kind of <laughs> knocks me on my ass is Callie um, because she has all these really cool storylines in front of her but she's such a unique character to write because she's very different from me. I'm, I'm very similar to Nate in a lot of regards where uh, consequences be damned. Um, I've, I've got that kind of mentality of, you know, I'm, I don't like authority. I don't like being told what I can or can't do. Um, and I just, I really relate to Nate, um, you know, whether that's good or bad, that's true. Um, but with Callie, she's very meticulous and kind of uh, devious in a way. And so she has a lot of, she surprised me with a lot of her storylines where I think it's going one way and then she takes it another when I start writing her and it's, it's always better. Um, but it's hard. It makes her release schedule a little harder because I say, Oh, I can do a hundred thousand words. No problem. And then I get a weekend and I'm like, crap, she just changed the whole story on me. So, um, that's happened a couple of times with Callie. Um, uh, but Soren, uh, the shaded devil series also had that happen too. Um, where Soren kind of took control and turned a, a series that was just going to be a little trilogy um, into seven books or more. Um, and all for good reasons. He just opened up a much cooler world than I thought was there. And so it's always exciting. That's, that's, that's the way that I like to write is character focus. Some authors really like to focus on the world building or the story or the sentence quality or some theme or some, you know, it's a wizard story. So it's got to be like X, Y, Z, and it's very cookie cutter to me. 
where I like to kind of make up the most complicated character I can and then put him in the worst situation that I can um, and then just see how they react. So it's very kind of mad scientist and how I approach my writing. Yeah. And it, it'll be interesting for your werewolf one. Yeah. 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 And that one's, that one's really cool. Uh, we, uh, we spent a lot so, of time kind of coming up with the outline for that. Well, and it'll be interesting. Cause I know, uh, when you first released Thorn, it was just kind of like, okay, another vampire we have, you know, vampires everywhere, but then you brought out Thorn and it was like, well, duh, it's Shane. It's something completely yeah. different. And so I'm sure it'll totally be the different. same with the werewolf. Hopefully yeah. they'll wear some under, under dog underwear too. <laughs> yes. No, you're, you're going to like the werewolf one. I'm really excited. Like I said, I'll be wrapping, actually I'll be wrapping that up tonight. The first draft that we've got. So, um, I'm, I'm excited to see what's going on there and how quick, you know, we might be able to do something with that. So I think you guys are going to love it. Definitely excited. And just thank you for this time and pulling people on here. It's yeah. fun. Yeah, thanks for coming, Jasmine. I appreciate it. Thanks, guys. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> thanks, all right, you have a good one, all right? <clears throat> all right, let me see who we got next. Uh, I think Malcolm's coming up next. Not Malcolm. He, I know, right? And we'll see what he what he has to say. Here we go. <laughs> What's going on, man? Hi, Shane. How uh, you doing? Hi, Lane. Uh, uh, good, good. Uh, Which part of the world are you in? Uh, Scotland, for best part. There you go. <laughs> uh, so, so I'll just say it. it's true. <laughs> uh, I love it. so, yeah. Um, yeah. I think you all know how much I love your universe. So, well, I, I, love, I love how much you help out with everyone and <laughs> just kind of moderating and doing all the crazy stuff that you put up with. And I really, we really, we all really appreciate that. Not just me and Lane, but all the readers too. So yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I wouldn't be able to do it without those books. And without for Den. A great bunch. There you go. So, so yeah. Uh, question that I had for you. Let me find it. Of I course. Think, I actually found two. But uh, in case somebody had already asked the first one. Okay. If you don't get to write, do your characters, i.e. Nate, Callie, and the rest, wake you up at night or cause you to not be able to sleep? Yeah. All the time. <laughs> Um, that's, it, it sounds like it, at first that was really funny and cool, but it mm. gets really annoying really quick because it's really hard for me to focus on other things, you know, like adult things and dad things. And, and I yeah. find myself often daydreaming, but it's about storylines. Like I'll be driving in the car and I'll come up with a crazy scene for Nate. Um, like one of the best examples of that is when I was writing tiny gods, that whole introduction scene with the car chase uh, was not in the book. Um, and then I was driving to pick up a vehicle and I had to drive a really long ways through Arkansas and it's just boring country roads. And I was, I was just bored to tears and I was still working at my job 40 hours a week and then trying to ride on the side. So I was tired and bored and angry and annoyed. And then I said, well, what would make this car ride more fun? And then I, I basically just imagined that whole car chase scene with Nate and Alucard and Jan. And that's where Jan was born. That, that <laughs> concept of him being born was just me trying to find a fun way to have a car trip. And so, yeah, it happens all the time where I'm, I'm always just kind of daydreaming and outlining and then I got to put it into the story. Okay. Uh, I know I got told I could only have one, but I'm going to ask you for second one anyway. <laughs> Go ahead. Because I'm a rebel. L Lane will yell at you if you can't. Yeah. Go right ahead. I think you approached this topic as well anyway earlier. Do you have any non-published, i.e. pre-Obsidian Sun, books that you don't want to see the light of day? I mean, I know you've said you've got for one that it's a bit rough, but you might let it out. Any that you don't want us to see, but that we would love to get hold of? Um, I've got, so I've got a couple story outlines that I haven't really fleshed out, like just completely new ideas, new series ideas, mm -hmm. um, that I'm not necessarily embarrassed about or anything. It's just I didn't really get that excited about, so I kind of shelved them. But the the first series that I wrote, the Hardcore Fantasy, um, it's actually a really cool story. Um, there, I haven't had any agent say that it was bad or anything. It just wasn't right at the time. And so I, I, I definitely I definitely see myself polishing that off and sending it to you know an arc team and an editor and really kind of tweaking that and publishing a traditional sword and sorcery type fantasy. Um, and it's it's 
along my usual style. It's it's sword and sorcery, but it's very different at the same time. And so it's uh, it's I loved it. I thought it was really cool. And, you know, I've had maybe maybe 10 people read it and they loved it. So I just I just didn't think I'd be able to make it big as an author starting with something like that, because Nothing. traditional fantasy is hard to break into. Now that I've kind of cracked a little bit of the mold of the fantasy genre, I think people would trust me enough to try it. Um, and then they would like it, but I just, I didn't have that foundation when I was first starting. So cool. I wanted to start with something more fun. And anything else? Any deep, dark, hidden ones? Deep, dark, you hidden don't ones? don't want to share with us. <clears throat> no, no, nothing, no, nothing yet. Like I said, I've got a lot of irons in the fire mm. um, that I'm forcing myself to kind of pause on because I've got, you know, 15 books ahead of me this year. Um, so yeah, it's, there's probably going to be anywhere from 1.2 to 2 million words written this year, uh, on the conservative side. So, um, that's, you know, anywhere from 10 to 20 books potentially, depending on how long they are. So, um, got a lot of writing ahead of me, so I don't want to start any additional new projects, but there's probably five or six out there that I could dust off in 2022. Sweet. Good so, to know. Yep. So and I'm not going to read them. You I'm write them, we'll read them. There you go. I'm not, I'm not going anywhere. I'm, I'm going to be doing this till like heel over. So good. Good. And we'll stick you up with, get you a stick and get you, uh, what was it? Get a necromancer to raise you, to keep you on going a there bit you go. longer. There you go. Perfect. Okay. And just a awesome. shout out. Thanks Lane for everything you do. Hey, I appreciate don't, it. Thank don't, you. Don't thank him. <laughs> but I'll leave you to thank him enough. Yeah. Uh, no, Lane, Lane keeps this boat going. So, <laughs> we'll thanks, see, thanks for joining us. Take care. Mm -hmm. All right. Next up, we got Angela. <laughs> I think she's ready. As long as she's not driving, I'm I'm good with putting her on here. We'll find out. Hey. I am not driving. My daughter is. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I uh, Shane loves the books. They're absolutely my favorite. All awesome. time. As soon as anyone comes out, I'm reading it. I don't sleep that night. That's done. Then I read it slowly so I can absorb it. Um, but I do have a question about the, maybe there's going to be a novella or a short story about Gunner's Bachelor Party because it was referenced in the book a couple of times and it seems like there's a story there that maybe we should know. Yeah. There, have you, have you heard of the last call anthology? No. Yeah. That's, there's the bachelor party story in there. Okay. Yeah, it's now, that's the one with um, Quinn, right? It's, it's got three different stories. So the book is called Last Call Shane by Shane and probably by Cameron since he's in there too. But it's a, a short story from each of our series. So Callie's got one, Quinn has one, and Nate has one. And Nate's story is The Bachelor Party. Okay. Well, then I'm no. sorry. Wait, there's a question no, that I before I looked through all of them. <laughs> no, that's, that's actually very helpful because a lot of people ask the same question. They don't know it's there. So, Absolutely. Uh, yeah. There's a ton of... It's helpful. Yeah. Yeah. So no, you'll, you'll get ready to laugh. Like you're going to want to make sure that you're where you can just focus. Cause it's, it's, it's just nuts. Like it doesn't follow the typical, typical, you know, structure of a Shane story, even though those are crazy too, but this one, I just have fun. So it's, you'll, you'll laugh really hard and you'll roll your eyes and it's, it's a riot. I, I'm looking forward to it. Soren has become my favorite character. So I was really excited when you said that he's got some books coming up and oh, wait yeah. for those. But thank you again for just giving us entertainment and yeah. letting our minds to take an adventure. Well, I'm I'm hoping that it's it's giving you something fun to do in 2020, and uh, I'll I'll try to carry that through to give you even more in 2021. So, um, but yeah, Soren, I'm really excited to get back into Soren because there's so many cool things coming in book four. Um, I thought I was going to be able to get to it this year, but just the craziness of, you know, all the stuff that everyone's dealing with in 2020 really just pumped the brakes on it. So. Um, so I'm really anxious to get into Soren again because uh, what happens in book four is just really, really fun, really, really crazy. So, so yeah. Dude, thank you. Yeah, awesome. Well, thanks for thanks for uh, jumping in and saying hey, and uh, I'm glad I, I write good stuff for you. <laughs> thanks, y'all. Have a great day. All right, you too, Angela. Thanks, dude. Thanks for joining us. Thank y'all. Bye. All right, we're waiting on on more to join. All right. So we're we're gonna have some dead time. So yeah, we got some questions about uh, last call on audio when last call got brought up. Last call would be an interesting one. It would be, take a lot of coordination. Um, yeah, Cameron and I have talked about that. So the when when you think about it, you have to schedule. Um, you have to schedule uh, audiobooks with narrators, and they've got 
you know, dozens of other clients or projects that are sometimes scheduled like a year or two in advance. So it's really hard to kind of pin them down sometimes, especially for a short story, um, because they'd rather book something big and, you know, get their paycheck. So, you know, we, we've kind of kicked that idea around and started wondering if there's another way that we could do that, um, because we'd have to schedule three narrators for, you know, really short stories. So um, we're, we're chewing over ideas, whether that's, um, you know, us reading our own stories. Um, I don't have the equipment for that. I have no problem doing it, but uh, we just got to see if we can actually deliver a good product on that. But um, but then again, if we can book the narrators and that's pretty easy, then we, we could do that. So there, there's it's definitely something we want to do, especially with Beer Olympian. I think that one would just, and, and the Quinn and Callie story, I think would be really fun. So definitely want to do that with audio. All right, man. Well, we have got Samantha. She's ready to go. If you want to shake your head, yes, say you're good to go. All right. Let's bring her in. What's going on, man? Hello. I'm not too much, just nervous. Why are you nervous? Don't be. I feel, no I feel a watching. little bit out of no my depth watching. here. Oh, it's just us. No one's watching. I'm a... I'm a little bit newer to the temple verse. Oh, okay. I just how, recently, how, I just, you, I absolutely love them. Oh, that's awesome. How'd you hear about my books? I, it actually popped up as an ad through uh, Kindle unlimited. Uh, awesome. One of those Facebook ads that most people just scroll past and it caught yeah. my attention. That's all lane. So I we, was, can, we can thank lane for that. I was, <laughs> but I'm uh, here in Michigan and. Oh man. What's what's the temp up here? Yeah, to say what's the temperature up there? Twenty-seven degrees at the moment. Oof, no yep. snow today. Okay. So you guys, you guys obviously get snow a lot, but you weren't hit by the nor'easter, right? Oh yeah. Oh, were you? No, we missed oh, okay. it. Thankfully, it skipped right past us. But we've got another snowstorm coming this week. If it makes anyone feel better. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, I've, I've got family in. I think it's Storm Lake, and. I think Potato Lake is somewhere else, but they're, I think that's in South Dakota maybe, but, um, but yeah, I've got family up there and they just live with mountains of snow. It's pretty much what they get every winter. Yep. So, I mean, but, we, it's shaped like a mitten. I don't know why anybody is ever surprised when it's cold that's, outside. That's a good point. I never thought of that. <laughs> but that's awesome. But um, first off, awesome. I wanted to thank you for setting up the den because yeah. that's such an awesome place. Yeah. It's everyone is so awesome. It's so nice. I've had so much fun there. Cool. Um, here's my question. What advice would you give to yourself as a young writer? So don't take any of the rules seriously. So, so many of the rules that held me back from writing, um, were just self-imposed or, you know, academic imposed or institution imposed beliefs that I just said, oh, well, you know, Jim Butcher did it this way or Terry Goodkind did it that way or Patrick Rothfuss did it this way. And so I got to follow the rules. And then I think that's a life lesson is that break the rules, see what happens. I mean, what's the worst that could happen? Because if you're going to follow the rules and your, your chances are very slim, you're not going to publish a book. But if you can break the rules and publish a book, then you're already ahead. What's the worst that can happen? Well, you're not going to publish the book. The same thing as if you didn't try. So why not just give it your all and see what happens? And so I've kind of approached a lot of my business that way. And that's that's what kind of blew it up is everyone told me I couldn't do it. Um, I worked with Lane at a bank and uh, I was a credit analyst. And uh, they would always say, hey, let's go out to eat or let's go grab you know happy hour drinks or let's go do this. or um, And I would say, no, I've got to go write. And I would bring my laptop to a park. And I would just go write, you know, Nate Temple. And they said, is that that little writing thing you do? And not Lane, but just other people at the bank would say, is that that writing thing you do? And uh, I was like, yeah, yeah. They said, oh, cool. I mean, we're having drinks. We're having a lot more fun than you. So why don't you just stop being a nerd? Um, and then Lane was the one that said, well, you know, how are you doing in that thing? And so I pulled up my sales for that day and it was like $3 uh, from someone in Germany. And I was like, oh, man, I, I don't know this person. I sold a book in Germany. And I was just so excited. Um, and Lane was like, that's awesome, man. I, I've never done anything like that. So he was actually just genuinely excited for me trying to do something that for all intents and purposes, I shouldn't be doing. Um, 
And we've been friends ever since for that reason, because he's always been that kind of hungry, chase your dreams kind of guy. And so, um, you know, just kind of meeting people like that and, and surrounding yourself with people like that, that um, don't want to be average. You know, the lollipop of mediocrity is you lick it once and you suck forever. And so um, I always just wanted to find people that weren't like that. And so whether the weirder they are, the better. And that's why I made the Den of Freaks. That's why I called Supernaturals Freaks is because those are my people, the misfits, the people that don't care about the rules and they just chase their dreams. That's really awesome. I'm definitely glad you've got someone like Lane in your life that's able to push you to do better. It's yeah. always incredible yeah. just to have that kind of support system. Well, it's also you guys. I'm very glad it's that you're you able to do this. Yeah. I mean, it's also the Den of Freaks. I mean, they're so inspiring and so just fun and they don't take anything too seriously and they're all there for each other. And it's it's more of a, it's not a book club. It's a, it's a, a treehouse club. You know what I mean? It's like the the little rascals or something. And that's kind of what I wanted is just a little safe haven for nerds. And just, you can just be that's yourself. That's exactly what you've built. Yeah. That's exactly what you've yeah. built. I know a lot of people find a definite sense of community. Yeah. That's the biggest thing. Den. Yeah. And it's, it's really incredible to see just everything you've built and the universe you've created. It's so intricate and all encompassing. It's just absolutely incredible to see what you've done with it. Oh, uh, thank you. you I appreciate it's, that. I, I explained the temple verse to my nephew today as science fiction and fantasy got together and had a baby essentially. Perfect. Absolutely. Perfect. Yeah. No, it's, I just tried to have fun with it and I tried to write something that I would want to read instead of following the rules. I just okay. kind of tried my own thing. So break the rules. That's, that's my advice. Thank you. Awesome. <laughs> thank you for uh, having me. Yeah. Thank awesome. you, Samantha. Thanks and for I'm, joining us. Yeah, I'm glad Lane's uh, ads no work. Thank you, Lane. <laughs> hey, you absolutely. <laughs> Have a good day. All right. Have a good one, Samantha. Have a good day. You too. All righty. I think that was everyone that actually got a reply back to me. Okay. We've been, been trying to get as many people and doing that kind of stuff. So if you... I don't know if there's any questions. There's questions about Netflix and yeah, I'm scrolling Amazon, through Amazon, I'm Amazon scrolling Prime through. Video. Amazon Prime Video, yeah. yeah. Uh, love love to get that done, but we've all seen what's what's happened to Hollywood recently, and so there's a lot of you know questions in the air on that. So um, we definitely have uh, people that are very knowledgeable and very interested in those kind of avenues. Um, and we're, we're talking to him. We're just kind of, you know, we've got a lot of things going on right now, just with the books in general and what's writing, you know, what books are coming out, what projects we're working on. And so, um, we're always entertaining that idea. Um, but we also are just kind of making sure we're not spreading ourselves too thin. Um, and just making sure that we're still delivering the books that you guys want. Cause that's the most important thing, uh, is making sure you guys have what you need before we start trying to sell a new drug. Uh, in a movie, as much as I want to do that, uh, got to make sure we do it right too. So, um, just selling the rights just to get a movie isn't what I want to do. I want to make sure that it's done right, do it justice. Absolutely, I think that's what everybody wants. Yeah. And so, if I'm if I'm kind of staring at the screen and looking like I'm not focusing, I'm just looking at the comments, seeing if anyone asks any questions on there. Uh, I'm kind of doing the same thing going through. If you have a question, post it now. Um, yeah. and, I can, and I can stay scrolling on the bottom uh, and try to keep up with it. But I'll spend a couple seconds here just kind of rolling through. But how do you keep all your characters separate? I don't know who asked that because um, it just says Facebook user. Um, but that's I, I'm not a good example on how to manage things. Um, I myself am very uh, disorganized, but it works for me. And so I don't have, you know, a binder or a dossier on each character. I wish I did at times, uh, because then I have to go back and say, oh man, what happened to Gunner in book four or book five? And what, what person did he make this deal with in book seven? And, and so there is a lot of things like that that would make my life a lot easier. Um, but for the most part, it's just all in my head. Um, I've got occasional notes for upcoming story arcs, but, um, I, I think the reason I'm able to do that is because they're not just cookie cutter werewolf A, werewolf B, werewolf C. 
I really, whenever I come up with a character, I really try to make them um, psychologically and philosophically unique um, and strange almost, whether they're good or bad. I try to give them some kind of defining characteristic and motivation that um, is really fun to read about, whether you agree with them or not, or like them or not, that might actually be the point, you know, you hate them because they're this certain way. And so I try to make really strong, complicated characters. And I think that's what lets me just kind of keep it in the back of my head. So good question. Uh, sorry, I've got another one for you. I saw, here you go. I'll pop it up on the screen. Can you see it? Yep. Okay. Out of all, that's, that's con bloodlust. Out of all Nate's friends, who is your favorite to write? Um, so I assume you mean side characters for Nate. Um, so I would say I've got a few because they're, I, I make them all so different. So Carl is definitely a, a top contender. Um, just because what's going to happen in Savage is going to really blow people's minds. Um, that's going to be really fun to reveal. It's going to kind of be like legend. Um, when you find out some things about Nate and some of his friends, um, you're really going to find out some cool stuff about Carl and all the elders. So that's fun for that reason. But I would say as a, just a character to write in general, I would say Alucard, um, Gunner, definitely. I mean, Gunner's just kind of the noble Captain America type person uh, who, you know, when he gets angry, he's not, ne not necessarily so noble, but um, I would say Gunner for that reason, Talon, because there's a lot of, a lot of stuff that's going to come out again in Savage um, that's going to make people just really curse me out when they realize some of the stuff that I've written before um, and how it all kind of came together into Savage. So that's going to be fun. There's, there's a lot of characters that I love writing about uh, for that reason, because I know what's coming and no one else does. And so I just love kind of playing with you guys. Uh, so like Pan, uh, for example, was a cool one to do that with. Um, a lot of people hate me for, um, but yeah, I'd say Gunner and Alucard. Um, I mean, that's why I picked him as horseman in the first place. Uh, Alucard is, uh, an incredibly complex character. That's a monster that doesn't want to be a monster. And so he's having to kind of revert back to what he used to be. And Nate's trying to do the opposite. He's trying to become better than he used to be. And so they're all kind of just different motivations and conflicting, uh, goals. And so that's always really fun to put them in the same room together. Let's see. Now they're moving so fast. I did. I did that. So if anybody's ever wondering if they're looking back and seeing me blink 10 times and what that was, I, 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 saw thought, that. I thought it was funny. Exactly. I bet nobody else would notice, but I was like, I'll make it a point to figure out when to say, okay, I'm, I'm actually didn't have a seizure or anything. Where did the, oh, <laughs> it took me a minute. I was like, Albert, who's that? Um, so uh, the idea of Albert came, it's in the Cali books. So I don't want to ruin it. Um, but there's a, <laughs> I'm trying to talk about it without giving a spoiler. Um, there was a yellow rubber ducky in one of the, workspaces that I was using um, when I was working at home and he was just there and he was from a previous owner and I don't know how he got there or why he was still there or why just he was just in kind of an old where or an old uh, shed that we had uh, an old pool house and so there was just a random yellow rubber ducky there um, and I they never threw him away I never threw him away and he just kind of sat there for like three years and I never really realized it and so I just started writing, uh, obviously darling and deer have, you know, a bunch of crazy ideas, but, um, but I just, it's just one of those stories that just kind of ran with me as I'm sitting there writing, I saw myself looking at the stupid rubber duck and I said, okay, let's use that. So there's a lot of things like that in the book that are just fun to break away from the seriousness of some of the other scenes. All right. Actually, I think somebody just joined us. So I can bring them up live. Hold on. Perfect. They might need to unmute themselves. There we go. Hey, I know her. <laughs> Hi. I know her. What's going on? Uh, you know, things and writing books and 
doing stuff. There you go. Is book two ready yet? <laughs> you're funny. <laughs> yeah, you're, that's funny. <laughs> I yeah. asked Cameron. I asked Cameron the same thing today, and he cursed me out. Uh, Good for him. So I, I always ask him because we're live. I'll do that later. <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> Nothing. But I had a question for you that I know yeah. everybody else wants to ask, and uh -huh. then they don't. And so I have no qualms about asking you. Anything, <laughs> right. So what I want to know is. When are you going to stop bebopping around some of these secret projects that you have and actually give us some concrete information on some of these co-author deals, yes. new book people, and you always promise it and then you never follow through. So with, with the one that you're referring to, that's a co-author project. I can't talk about it because he, it's actually my fault that it's delayed. Um, because I was yeah. working on two many things. Lane's laughing. It's Lane's fault. It's not my fault. There you go. Don't you do it on Lane. <laughs> what am I blaming myself for? Um, yeah. No, it's actually my fault. So um, this this author will work as fast as as fast as I let him. I mean, it's it's not a you know what I mean. So that I would assume that news could come pretty quick because um, I'm actually taking a break from Savage today uh, to do that. So he's just waiting on me. Um, and then he works very fast. So I, I would assume that we could start talking about details of that fairly soon, depending on the launch strategy, because we might not do ebook first. We might try to time it with audio first or audio simultaneously, which takes a little bit more scheduling. But even if we were able to do that, we'd probably be able to announce a date um, as soon as him and I talk. So he's waiting on me. I'm the one dragging my feet. That's all my we fault. We don't need a date. We just need to know what's going on. Yep. You, very <laughs> very you want to tell us what's going on, then we'll need a date. Uh, I can tell you that there is going, I, I, I foresee in 2021, there being a flood of books yes. coming out of Argento. Yes. Like, I, I, I myself will have at least 10. So depending on these word counts that I'm looking at, it could be double, you know, it just depends. So, um, but me alone, just 10. And then that's not counting the co-author project. That's not counting anything like that. Um, so there's a lot of stuff coming in 2021. Um, so I'm excited about that because I'm ready to work again. Um, but yeah, this, uh, this co-author project, I want to announce it right now, um, but I can't. It will be very soon. That's why I said first week of January, we might have something that we can announce or at least who it is. You know, we can do something like that and we will. Yeah. Um, but I can't right now. Cause, yeah, cause if you started, I'd, I'd hit your mute button. <laughs> 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 exactly. Um, I'm going to stay on you about it because it's yep. no, but my, my stuff, I'm actually going to be announcing probably first week of January, all those projects that I was telling you about. Um, I'm going to have um, a schedule written out, kind of like you do, where you actually are organized and responsible. <laughs> well, um, yeah, I'm going to have some like hell that. lately, but yeah. <laughs> well, that's one reason I didn't is because I knew everything was changing so fast that I didn't right. want to miss a deadline. And so, um, you know, I've kind of got the situation where I think I can make all that work anyway. So I'm going to commit to my stuff and then we'll sprinkle in all the other stuff like Alchemist Air and all these other things. So. Um, there's gonna be a ton of cool stuff, but yep. And we got, and let's see. So by February 15th, we'll probably have three books released and maybe by, uh, March 15th, we'll have another one. Mm -hmm. Um, looking, looking at you, Kimbra. <laughs> yeah. I know you're ready. Yeah, you're ready yeah. for that first one to go out. So, uh, so yeah, we'll... I'm ready to say goodbye to that one. Cause that one's been stewing in my head for a while and I'm ready for the storage to move forward. And so. But um, sure. when I went back through the second time and um, the story expanded 20,000 words almost. There you uh, go. That's and so um, there's a lot more little things in there. I added a whole new fight scene. And there you go. So, uh, yeah, good, good little things, quirks here and there and dropping some extra Easter eggs that I didn't drop the first time. Perfect. And um, it's, it's – uh, I'm looking forward to uh, getting that into everyone's hands because I know I've been promising it for a while. But, we'll you know. make it happen. We'll make it happen. We'll make it happen. We got a lot of cool stuff. So 
um, that's next on my list this weekend. So <laughs> after I finish my project tonight with the other mystery person. I'll right. I, yeah, I've got a lot of writing to do myself. I have one coming out on Sunday. Yeah, I was about to say on the 20th. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it was actually a pre-order that I ended up canceling because I wasn't happy with the final edit. And so, boy, that was tough hitting that cancel button. And but it needed to be done. Yeah. And so but it's still coming out on Sunday. There you go. And um, I'm excited about it. It's a whole new series, a whole new world. And um, it's going to launch me into 2021 and the outlook for for that year. And so. I'm awesome. excited. We're excited. And I'm sure there are people in the comments very excited. I'm sure yep. I need to flip back to Facebook. Hey, guys. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Well, perfect. Yep. Well, I'm excited to read it, like I said, this weekend. So let me know. I'm sure there'll be something I have to change. I will. No, <laughs> I'll, I'll let you know. I'll have a ton of stuff. I always suggest stuff, even if I don't really care if you change it. I'm always just whatever comes into my brain as I'm reading. I'm like, oh, I'm just going to throw it out there and they can do whatever they think. Um, but I always like to give that feedback. Yeah. So. And then perfect. I got to go do some Christmas shopping. Oh, tell me about it. Those last minute things. I've got Christmas on Sunday, so I've got to, I've got to. I'm going to make cookies oh. and I've got to wrap gifts. Those are two things that well, I, I had uh, evidence of uh, Tushman uh, caramel here. And, I have a whole pile of it in the kitchen. And yeah, um, yeah it's, it's being devoured here at the house. The package showed <laughs> up um, two days ago. It was awesome. More than half gone. I think we got ours yesterday, I think, or the day before. Yeah, it was yesterday or a few days ago, but yeah. I don't know. My day, the days this week have, so yep. bye. Well, that's awesome. Thanks for joining us, Kimbra. Shane All didn't right. know you were coming on, so that was great. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Bye. See ya. Hope cut her off. She said bye. <laughs> bye. Awesome, awesome. Well, I think we we touched on a lot of a lot of different stuff. If there was anything yeah. else that you wanted to, Shane, we could we could go into it or I think that might be it. Yeah, um, I think I've hit everything. Um, bum, 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 bum. Like I said, this other authors, once, once I jump off here, I'm probably jumping straight into that mystery co-author project. So, and if that person's watching, he's probably going to be texting. Maybe he already did text say, Oh yeah. Awesome. Let's go right now. I'm ready. So he's, he's literally ready to go. It's, it's me that's pumping the brakes and just because of being busy. So, but what I've seen so far is awesome. I'm really excited about it. So I'll be doing that as soon as I get off here. Awesome. Awesome. Well, yeah, I think that's, that pretty much does it, man. We'll, we'll, we'll get out of here. And I think uh, I'll probably try to break up this video at some point in time. I know we've talked about that. Do you have something else to say? Uh, Jason brought up a good point. So we'll, yeah. we'll post this in the den. We'll do like a quick summary of everything that I announced. So if you came in late, don't worry. Uh, we'll also make this available later so you can rewatch it if you want, but anything, any kind of pertinent information on announcements or dates or news, uh, we'll do a post that has all of that in there too. Um, <clears throat> but um, I'm, I'm working on about 30 to 50,000 words a week. Um, that's kind of my schedule right now. Um, so that's, you know, if, if you conservatively work that out, it's like 1.2 to 2 million words for the year. Um, very, con you know, we'll, we'll see. That's like taking 12 weeks off. I, I don't think I'll take 12 weeks off. So who knows? Uh, there's going to be slow days, busy days, editing days, you know, all that kind of stuff. So that'll change. But, but I would think that I'll probably have 10 books out this year myself. Um, and then on top of that, there's going to be a co-author project that I would think we'll be able to give some news on in early January. I've just got to um, do a little bit more work on that. Some news. I don't know if we'll have a date or anything, but we'll be able to announce some news for that. Um, maybe who it is or something like that. So, um, but yeah, I've got with all those words that I'm writing, I would say that I'm going to be doing Nate Temple 15, which is Savage. Uh, the pre-order just came out for that today. Uh, it's going to be January 26th, I believe, if I got that right. Um, yes. January 26th. And then there's a book after that called Dark Horse um, with Nate. Um, the, the picture's already posted in the den. You can see it. But again, we'll, we'll put all this in there. But um, that'll be a continuation, kind of like Savage Part 2. So it goes Carnage, Savage and then Dark Horse, and it's all kind of a little trilogy. So um, those are for Nate. Then I'm going to be doing Shade of Devil, probably book four or five, uh, maybe even six. Um, some of these might change just if I give, you know, Nate more books or Shade of Devil more books or if I kind of mix up the order. Um, but Feathers and Fire, 10, 11, 12, 
you know, I'm trying to get her close up to Nate. So he's on book 15. Um, so I want to try and get her and probably Quinn too around book 15, or at least keeping up with Nate book 16. Um, there's a co-author project, um, about all I'll say is werewolves and it's nothing like you've ever read before. Um, and I'm really excited about that. It's a co-author project. I would say one to three books potentially this year, 2021. Um, and then I've got an, uh, an angel series that's coming out called shattered halo. And that'll be next year as well. So tons of stuff. I know I've took a break off for a little while. Um, it's just kind of 2020 stuff, you know, everyone having a dumpster fire every year, um, trying to kind of circle the wagons and, you know, prioritize on some things. And so, um, so yeah, so I kind of took, took a break at the end of the year where I was just kind of juggling other stuff other than the writing side of the business, you know, working with some of the newer authors, uh, their marketing plans, their cover designers, their narrators, you know, all the, the publisher jobs, um, which are not as fun because I love writing, but now I'm getting back into the saddle and Lane's Lane's taken over the the steering wheel on the on the publishing side. So um, all really good, but we'll we'll announce any of those hard dates or just kind of general announcements. We'll put that in the den, so you you won't miss it. Don't worry. Absolutely, and I'm I was kind of trying to delay one of the people that was going to come on might hop in here. We kind of had it scheduled out for another another nine or 10 minutes anyways, but, but to the people that actually were able to come in and ask questions and stuff, thank you for doing it. It's, I, I know it's probably a little bit nerve wracking to come on here, uh, especially the first time and, and ask a question like that to somebody you look up to or anything like that. So, so I really appreciate you coming on and, and I'm sure Shane does as well. Absolutely. I mean, there's no one here to look up to except Lane maybe, but, uh, but no, it's just, uh, it, it's always more nerve wracking in your head than it is in real life. Um, I found that's pretty much true of everything. I'm just a guy. Don't, no need to be nervous. We're all nerds. We're all freaks. I've been chatting with most of them since they got off and it, it, all of them basically said like, I was really nervous, but that was really fun. Like after they yeah. got on. So so I think they, just pretend we're pretend we're at a bar having a drink. That's what really that's what Friendsgiving is all about. Um, we weren't able to do it this year, but you always hear people talking about how awesome it was to go to Friendsgiving. Um, we just all hang out, you know, two hundred of us or whatever it was one one hundred fifty or something crazy, um, and we all just hang out. And they realize, wow, he's just a normal guy. Um, he's prettier than Cameron, but he's just a normal guy. Um, and so, uh, so we we just have a good time, and that's that's all it is. Just. So I, I love talking to you guys. So thank you for braving it and jumping on the interwebs and FaceTiming with a stranger. So that's that's awesome. Yeah, and now that we know how how easy this was, yeah. at, least, at least on Shane's part, he didn't do anything. He just had to sit there. But uh, how easy it is for me to, to get people <laughs> on here. Um, I think I think this is something we'd like to do maybe more of yeah. during a live. At least at least take one person every time or something like that, and and get somebody to come on and chat with us. So yeah. I think it was really fun, and I think I think uh, everybody enjoyed it. Yeah, I think it's really cool. I like this because it, it's it's hard to kind of scroll through the comments and see, um, and you know make them feel special. Whereas if you can actually just jump on the phone with them real quick, I mean that's super cool. Um, and it's fun actually putting a face to a name because I, a lot of the names that I see, I'm like, Oh yeah, I know that name. I know that name, but I've never met them or never seen them. You know, you see whatever profile picture they have and it could be a cat or a dog or one of my book covers or something. So it's cool to you know actually interact like humans. So, Didn't hear Malcolm's accent. That was great. Yeah. I was like, Oh wow. He's got an accent. Yeah, me too. <laughs> it took me completely by surprise. It shouldn't have, but all right. I think, I think uh, we got our, our last questioner here. Yeah, uh, Jules. Jules is going to join us. You ready? Yeah. If you shake your head, yes, I can. All right, perfect. Hey, how you doing? Hi. Good morning. Good to see you. Yeah, you two both. I've only just joined the broadcast, so I've missed it all. So I'm going to have to go back and watch it all. Oh, it, yeah. It'll all be available. We're gonna we'll That's repost fun. it if we need to or whatever. But yeah. So how Excellent. you doing? Excellent. What time is it? Yeah, you... really. It. Uh, just gone 9 a.m. On not even 9 a.m. About 5 2. There you go. You're in Australia, is that right? Yeah, yeah Adelaide, South Australia. Okay. Yeah. Yep. That's awesome. Yeah. So how's everything over there? Good. It's uh, probably 30 degrees here. I don't know. 
it's cold. Yeah, maybe a little bit colder. Sun's yeah. not wow. shining. Wow. So. Yeah. It's, oh it's no, pretty, thirty degrees. Thirty degrees here is really hot. That's pretty cold there, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, Fahrenheit, not Celsius, but um. Yeah, yeah. yeah so. Fahrenheit. Yep. Okay. So just All right. Go ahead. All right. So my question for you is about um, your character, the toy maker, uh, with Carla Moroy. I hope that's how it's pronounced. I, yeah, I don't know. Carla Moreira? Moreira? Okay, know, sorry, can... Carla. <laughs> um, how much input did she have into the making of the character? And did she know exactly what was going to happen with her character or did you leave that as a major surprise for her? Um, I think I, she, she, I don't think, well, she had no input on what I was going to do. Um, okay. And so I told her, hey, I'm going to do something like this. But I also didn't want to spoil it for her. So I sort of thought that might be the case. Yeah. So, um, so that was, that was me um, finding a way to, merge a necessary character that I have for the series, for Callie's series. Um, mm -hmm. The toy maker is actually going to be pretty important um, to Nate Jeez. and Callie and a bunch of things. And so I found a way to make her character a lot more important than just a cameo. Um, kind of yeah. like, yeah. Um, you know, Mike Arthur. Um, there's who else is a major one that stuck around. Um, I know, uh, what is his name? Xander from, I think, Warhammer. Uh, I haven't Zander. read that one yet. I'm, uh, I'm almost up to that. Yeah. So I, I try to give more than just a cameo um, or, you know, Darling and Deer or based off Tammy and Larry in a way. Um, I assume that too. Yeah. I've just met, I've just met them for the yeah. first time. Then, uh, just started yeah. raged. Yep. Then, oh, okay. Just yeah. finished. Sorry. Yep. yep. So you'll, uh, you'll see that from Larry and Tammy. They're like, oh, okay, now I get a little bit more about Darling and Deer or vice versa. And so I always try to give, like, like I said, deep kind of psychological, philosophical um, backgrounds to these characters. And so with uh, Carla's cameo that she won, um, she sent me, I don't know if I have it right in front of me. Hold on. <laughs> yeah, I don't have it right in front of me. I think I have it on my other desk, but she sent me a little um, sculpture of Xylo, which you maybe haven't met yet. I yeah, yeah. Um, I've seen the statue, he's beautiful. Yeah. yeah, she's an incredible artist at making these figurines. Absolutely. And so, yep. And so she made that and I was like, oh man, that's so cool. And so I wanted to kind of do her justice uh, with the cameo instead of, you know, just someone that shows up and gets killed or something. Yeah. Uh, and so I, I just found a way to make it really fun. Yeah. The toy makers became one of my favorite yeah. characters. Uh, I think she was pretty fantastic in the first book I read. That's yeah, awesome. definitely. So. Perfect. Yeah. What other questions do you have for me? Well, I do have one other. Um, mm -hmm. Actually, I've got a whole list that I wrote down for <laughs> all the Argento authors in case I ever got to speak to them and ask questions. So um, well, I'm, I'm sure another we'll, one. I'm sure we'll do more lives with other authors. I mean, it's not just going to be this. We'll, we'll do it with, you know, Kimbra and Cameron and, you know, we'll, we'll do it with all of our authors where if they're coming out with a new book, then We'll definitely have something going on where we try to get oh. them to actually get to talk to the readers too um because we're all so different you know cameron's got an mfa so he can answer questions for budding authors or writers um that i couldn't and you know you know we all just have our different kind of experiences so um sorry i got distracted because i just realized the horns on the back wall look like they're on me <laughs> yeah they certainly do i'm trying not to laugh but i don't know why it took me an hour and a half to notice that but somebody else already mentioned it in the comments. <laughs> I just realized that. That's awesome. Uh, um, I think it's got something to do with the um, devil you've turned into. I couldn't have planned that better. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> so my other question is, um, when you've got a unique idea for a story, is there a way that you're able to um, do a search to see like a, um, a unique idea, maybe a like a shifter series or something that's never been done before. Is there a way that you're able to check to see if anybody else has ever written that um, genre or that species or anything like that? I don't think there's an easy way, if that's what you're asking. Um, it's just researching. Um, and so I always try to come up with storylines. Like I'm, I'm not going to write a werewolf book 
unless I think it can be totally different or totally unique somehow. Um, and same with the Soren, you know, Shade of Devil books. I didn't want to write a vampire book that's like every other vampire book. And so I really tried to come up with a story, you know, outline or character type or just kind of big picture stuff that no one had ever done. And that's how I came up with the whole Native American angle. And I'm like, there's actually some really cool ties that I can tap into here um, that most people haven't ever, that I've, I've never seen anyone do. And there's there's always going to be the chance yeah. that, some, that someone did it and you just don't find out. Um, but the way I think, I don't, I don't encounter that problem very often. <laughs> I normally make my stories, you know, so unique that it's, I would have heard about it if someone did it, so. Yeah, well, I think that's why you've become most of our favorite author because you keep a lot of us on our toes. You keep us guessing. Um, mm -hmm. I'm getting better already, picking up big clues that and mm -hmm. working them out before they're happening. So I'm really enjoying that because um, I don't get a lot of that with a lot of other authors. Um, I work out uh, the plots well ahead of time usually. I was but, kind of the same way. As a reader, I was kind of the same way. And so I, I approach it in that vein that as a writer, I try to kind of play games with the reader. And so I'll give them, oh. I'll, I'll, lead <laughs> yeah. them I'll, I'll lead them down the road and say, oh, yeah, you'll probably figure this out. You'll probably figure this out. And then I'll lull you into a sense of confidence and then I'll rip the rug out from under you. So I always try to just I try to make it fun for me, just to be honest, I'm sadistic. And so I, I try to, yep. <laughs> you know, storylines that will, would have caught me off guard or would have potentially caught me off guard. Cause I, I was the same way when I read a book, I know how it's going to end 90% of the time. And it's always just kind of boring to me. And so I try yeah. to, I try to avoid that pitfall with my stories. Occasionally you'll still do it, but just try to keep it interesting. So. That's great. Yep. Thank Break you. the rules. That's, that's my life motto. Break the rules. Absolutely. It's the only way to go. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Thanks for joining. Awesome. Us. It's, good. it's good talking to you. Thanks for waking up early to see me, and I yeah. appreciate it. And uh, I know you're Absolutely. a big person, and you're always you're always helping people out and talking to people and engaging. So I really appreciate that. Yeah, I got one of your books recently. It's um, it's supposed to be a um, original with the original cop. Um, it's a hardcover. Yeah. Of um, Obsidian Sun. Yeah. But on the, I just have one quick question, if that's okay. Of course. Um, I'm not 100% sure if it's original because on the inside cover, it's got the next couple of books. Um, so you mean like a first edition? Yeah, I thought it was a first edition and that's why I bought it. But then on the inside jacket, because it's a hardcover, mm -hmm. it's got uh, pictures of blood debts and then um, oh, sorry, book two, book three, book four, I think. Yep. And I don't think part. the yeah, the I don't think the original one did have that, but it does have the um, the year on it as two thousand and it's either sixteen or seventeen. Yeah. So the with with self publishing, it's a little harder to play that game um, because the only first to like everything is print on demand, and so if someone orders, they print a book right then. And so with a traditional publishing, they'll print 10,000 copies of a book and then ship them to all the stores um, where with an indie publisher, an indie author, um, they try to block a lot of people like me from Barnes and Noble. Um, and so once I prove myself, I can get in there, but they don't necessarily order 10,000 books. And so finding a first edition, it's going to be very difficult. I don't even, I mean, I've got some that I've got one. <laughs> it, it, it's out, it's, that just means that it's one that I bought when I first wrote the book uh, and I held on to it just as a keepsake. Um, and so there's probably some out there, um, but that one's a very early edition though, because it's probably yeah. a dust jacket with the four early covers on it. Yeah. It's got yeah. them all, which is really great. Um, it come from Amazon Australia. It was the, yeah. I think the second mm -hmm. to last copy because I put up on the website that I'd found a heap of, really cheap ones for all the Aussie fans. Yeah. And there was about four or five of yours and then a Hunter one as well. So I put oh, it up good. to let everyone know. Yeah. Hopefully that's they, they've all been sold. Yeah, that's really cool. It's um, it's that's one of the difficult parts um, is trying to get the international books available at a, at a reasonable price because the shipping is just insane. Yeah, so it really is. 
So we're, we're looking into that. I know a bunch of readers um, have offered to help us out with that in some way. And so we're, we're entertaining it. It's just, you know, without Penguin Random House backing you, it's kind of hard to play yeah. at some of the, the country clubs that, you know, I'm not snooty enough to be a part of. So yeah, I made a suggestion to you a while ago about maybe mm -hmm. trying to start shops in different countries, yeah. maybe see if some of the fans are willing to yeah to help out there or, you know, when people are traveling between countries to try and take the luggage with them yeah. rather than mm -hmm. having all the shipping costs. Yeah, but then we do that. have the issue with, if I was to do the Australian one here or someone like Sam Rooney, mm -hmm. um, the trouble with getting you signing the books, that all have to be pre-signed and then whoever's running the store would have to write the note in their exactly. handwriting from you. Exactly, and that's been I kind mean, of a headache. Yep. I don't know if that's an option that the den would be happy with, but I guess it's something to be thought about. Yep. Yeah, we're we're entertaining it all because you're exactly right. That's one of the biggest problems is they can get the books, but I can't sign them. Mm -hmm. So it's like, okay, well, we got to find a way around that. So, but we're we're, we're looking into it. We, we'd love to do it. That's good. Yeah. So, but well, it's the only reason that's stopping me from from getting this stuff because i had a couple of books sent out to me from cn crawford uh -huh. Kath, uh, christine. Uh, christine and nick yeah um that i'd won and it cost them just under 60 us dollars which you know it's not even australian dollars so that's even more yeah. just to send me two books so yeah. it's, it's sort of yeah, yeah it's it stopped me from buying from you guys and you know i really want stuff but yeah, yeah. we agree We'll try to figure something out because I know you're you're not the only one in that in that boat. <laughs> yep. I suppose I could always see if there's an Aussie going over for phones giving because I'm probably yeah. never going to be able to get over for my health and maybe see if I can send that hardcover over and get you to sign it for me. I'm yep. happy to pay the extra cost if need yeah, be. We, we can figure something. get you to sign it. We can figure something I out. I would, wouldn't doubt that we would uh, have a have an Aussie come over again. We've we've had uh, maybe two. I can't we've remember, had, just one or two, but. At least two. I think we've had one yeah. twice. Summer yeah. Riley twice, right? I'm yeah. thinking about it, but, but I'd have to come over a, a bit early and stay a bit later. Yeah. yeah. That's what. Of that's my what, health being so crappy. Yeah, we've had a couple of people do that where they turned it into a vacation and traveled. They cross, crisscrossed America, I think, for a week or two. Yep. So. Yeah. Awesome. It'd be wonderful. Yeah. So it would be in round june july wouldn't it so when that's you're when summer that's when we typically do it it's just you know this <laughs> we'll see you know i don't have any control perfect that's my birthday stuff. oh there you go <laughs> awesome well it was great talking to you billy great thanks guys have All a right, wonderful day and have a great christmas to you guys your thank family you. and everybody in the den i love you all Mwah. all right thank you very much merry christmas yeah bye okay, bye all right all right I think that was it, man. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you everyone for joining in. Like I said, we'll we'll post uh, any relevant announcements or anything like that. We'll post that um, over this weekend, maybe even today. We'll see. Um, so yeah. So it was awesome hanging out with you guys. All right. We'll talk soon. All right. See you guys.